And so going from a non-turbo Forester to owning, I counted the other day and I think I've owned over 30 STIs and probably close to 50-ish Subarus just in general. So STIs and including WRXs, Outbacks, Foresters, all those. What is going on guys? I have a little bit different of a video for you today. Today's video is just going to be the story of how I got into Subarus, how I got into making a business out of it, and how it is currently what I do for a living. Now to be clear how I did this, how I started this business, uh, wasn't necessarily the right way. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I'm not claiming that this is the best way to do it. I'm not claiming this is the right way to do it. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot. So this is just kind of how I got to the point of working for myself and maybe that will inspire some of you to do it. I'm not claiming this is the only way to do it or anything like that. Like I said, this is just how I did it and I've had a few people ask me. I've had a few people that I've told the story to and they think it's cool so I decided to make a video out of it and this is it. I went from a non-turbo Forester when I was 15 years old. That was when I bought my first car. My dad split the cost of the car with me and we put a motor in it. We bought it with a bad motor. And so going from a non-turbo Forester to owning, I counted the other day and I think I've owned over 30 STIs and probably close to 50-ish Subarus just in general. So STIs and including WRXs, Outbacks, Foresters, all those. Yeah, so I'm gonna walk you guys through from the beginning to the end, that's that's all this video is going to be about. Good morning, kitty. How are you doing? All right. I got to get onto this video. All right, so I'm going to attempt to find some old pictures and possibly some old videos to pop up while I'm talking. I think it might be kind of interesting. I know I have one for sure, and it's when we pulled the motor on my Forester. And I'm standing in front of the car. I look like a little child because I kind of was. I was 14 years old. So it's pretty funny, but I will try and find as many old pictures and videos and pop those up uh, for you guys to enjoy. But I guess, yeah, let's start at the beginning. So I kind of have always been mechanically inclined. When I was little, I liked to take apart things, started off with things simple, and then moved more into more complicated things that I'd like to take apart. My dad has automotive knowledge and just knowledge in general about motors, things like that. So he had me take apart lawn mowers. He had me take apart compressors out of air conditioning systems. So lots of things that kind of sparked my interest in vehicles, I guess. I think I bought my first car when I was almost 15 years old. It was a 2005 Subaru Forester, non-turbo of course, because a turbo car was not even something I processed at the time necessarily. But we bought it with a blown motor. It had a hole in the block actually. And the whole thing was my dad was gonna split the cost of the car and the motor with me. And he was gonna teach me how to put a motor in the car. So that is what we did. I think in total, it was like a $2,500 cost. So I paid like $1,250 for my first car, which is really cheap. So I'm very thankful that my dad was willing to do that for me. But that kind of sparked the modifying slash interesting cars i guess i drove it like it was for a while and then you know classic cut off the muffler put a subaru banner on the windshield i should have all old pictures of this stuff which i think i could find it for you But yeah, that was kind of what I did with that. It was a manual also. So that sparked my interest in manuals. You know, I love driving a stick shift compared to just an automatic. And then my turbo Subaru interest got sparked through my uncle who had a Forester XT and he had put a STI turbo, STI top mount, I think maybe a few other things like a downpipe um, and he had it tuned. So it was basically in terms of power wise, it was an STI and you know, that car was insanely fast to me at the time. But that sparked my interest for turbo Subarus and little did I know that probably, I think I was probably 17, I ended up buying that car from my uncle. He wanted to get into, I think an STI, he ended up buying a hatchback, I believe. But I bought that car from him and that was my first turbo Subaru. Uh, I had always had a job, I had always saved up. This was still when I was working a normal job, I was not working for myself. But I know I've got some old pictures and videos of this thing. Uh, this was, it was like my dream car at the time. 
I left it as it was for a while, and then I started getting into wanting to modify it. Specifically, I wanted an STI driveline in the car, so a six-speed diff, hubs, axles, and Brembo's. I wanted that in the car, of course, because it was cool, but I was also worried about the five-speed potentially blowing up, and I did not want that to happen. So the first car I purchased that had a six-speed in it was actually a 2002 WRX wagon. It had a six-speed in it, no STI rear diff or hubs or axles. I bought the car. It did not run. I pulled the six-speed out of it, and I believe I found a replacement five-speed. I put the five-speed in, got the car running, and I took a few other little mods off of it, and then I sold it and got a free six-speed. So again, very fortunate that that happened, but again, I was smart with how I purchased the car. I didn't just go buy a six-speed swap, which you can do if you have the money, but I didn't have the money, so I was very patient in trying to find the correct car to purchase but that is how i got the six speed and then i did end up saving up and i bought the rear differential i bought some 04 sti hubs i bought some sti axles and i bought some brembos from a guy down in the detroit area and that was my completed six speed swap so i did a six speed swap on the car and i did multiple other things like i did an up pipe external wastegate had it retuned there were a couple other things that i did but that was my first heavily modified car i ended up swapping some 2015 STI seats into it, a 2015 STI steering wheel, an STI cluster. I did a lot to the car. I know I have pictures of this one, so I can pop some of those up while I'm talking. Now, at that point, I had saved up a little bit more money. I worked, I believe, at a landscaping place at that time. No special job, wasn't making anything exceptional in terms of money, but I was saving my money, and I was looking at buying STIs with blown motors, and I ended up finding one locally for a very good price. I believe the first STI I bought, I think I bought it for $3,000. So it actually did run, but it had ring land failure. And I ended up driving it home. It was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That looks nice, aside from the smoke behind you. Which is close to where I live. So I bought that car, I had the cash, went and got it and that was my first STI. The car was kind of rotted out, a little bit rough, but I ended up parting it out and I made a lot of money. If you know anything about the parts and what they are worth on the STIs, uh, I made a lot of money off that car for a 17, 18 year old kid. And it kind of sparked my interest in, hey, I could maybe do this as a job. I could maybe work for myself and do this. And before and in between kind of buying more STIs, I also had purchased a few WRXs, a few Forester XTs, I think some Legacies, a couple Outbacks. I did some non-turbo Subarus as well. I would buy them with a blown motor, put a new motor, and that's kind of a big part of why I continuously had money to repurchase cars and repurchase cars. I wasn't using the money that I was making to spend on my own personal cars. I just reinvested it into buying another car, making more money off of it, et cetera, et cetera, continuing to do that. And that's kind of how it started. For a while, I was working a regular job full-time, so 40 hours a week, and then weeknights, weekends, I was just out here working all the time. I probably worked, I'm sure I worked 100 hour weeks, easy sometimes. I would literally work seven days a week. I would work weeknights. I worked a lot back when I was probably 17 to 20 years old. I worked a lot more than I do right now, which isn't necessarily a good thing. I should probably be working more now, but anyways. So for a while I did that. I worked full time at a regular job and then weekends, weeknights here at home doing the Subaru part out stuff. But then it got to the point where I had so much to do, I couldn't get enough done. And I ended up working part-time at another job, I believe three days a week, and then two days a week, and still weeknights and weekends, I was working here at home. But at that point, my money making at home had exceeded even my full-time job, which again was nothing special. I think I was painting interiors of houses with a friend, and I was making decent money, but nothing exceptional. But my home income had exceeded that. And I did that for I can't remember exactly how long, at least probably six months up to maybe a year, a year and a half. I'm not exactly sure. And then I got to the point, like I said, where I was making more money and I decided to quit my job and work full time at home. It was kind of a very weird feeling to quit my job and make more money at home. It felt fairly secure because I had, again, started already making more money at home and I was pretty comfortable doing it, but it was kind of, you know, you're now your own boss and if you don't work money doesn't come in i wish i could remember more exactly of what all went on but it then turned into more of a business like i said i was full-time 
I had to get my LLC because I had to pay taxes. I made enough money where obviously I needed to pay tax. So I got my LLC, Burger Performance Parts LLC, I believe is the exact name on the documents. And yeah, I think I was full time. I'm trying to think exactly. I think it's been a little over two years that I have been working full time for myself making more than I would if I had a regular job. I'm not making exceptional money. I'm not making any money off of YouTube or social media yet, but that is the goal of all these videos is to eventually get to that point. But I was making, I would say it was higher than, I don't know exactly what the average household or person income is in America, but probably a little above that. And yeah, it's just been that since then. Most of what I do is parting out vehicles. So I'll buy one like this or this, for these, for example, are not necessarily part out cars. This one is not getting parted out, but say I were to buy this one and it were to be rotted out or it was crashed or it just was not worth fixing, then I would pull all the parts off of it. I would sell the six speed, the Brembo's, the drive line. I'd sell any mods it had. I'd sell body panels, interior. There's so much you can sell on these older Subarus, but that is probably 75 to 85% of what I do. And then I get cars like these over here. This car was actually a really cheap one that I bought and I ended up fixing and making a budget build STI out of it. But for example, that one was fixed. This Wu-Tang Wubaru Subaru over here is going to get fixed. This 2019 STI over here was one that I purchased with a blown motor and fixed. So again, not all of these are part out cars, but some of them are. And that is what I started out with because that's what I knew how to do. And then I just found one that was really nice and I learned how to put a motor together for that and I learned how to get it running. Yeah, just learn how to do all that. It sounds easier than it was. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of late nights, a lot of messing up. There's a lot that goes into it. I wouldn't be able to do it without my parents allowing me to work out of their barn. I could find a shop and rent a shop, but that would obviously cost me more money. But a lot of people do do that. So it's definitely an option if you don't have a space at home to work at. So yeah, it was definitely an advantage to be able to work at home and I will forever be grateful for my parents allowing me to do that. I hope someday that I make enough money to be able to thank them more than just saying it. But yeah, there's so much that I've learned. Most of it I've learned on my own. You get a vehicle that you can daily drive and then you take your project vehicle and you learn how to do it. You take it apart, you put it back together. You make mistakes. I learned how to calculate what I could buy a blown up STI for based off what I could sell all the parts for. I learned the hard way sometimes. I have lost money on vehicles. I would say out of maybe, probably if I if I figured 30 STIs, I would say I probably lost money on maybe two of them, two or three of them, which is not very much. I think that's, I'm happy with that ratio of profit to money loss on STIs. I calculate pretty low on what I can sell parts for. I would rather just not buy one than buy one and almost make no money or not make any money. I think you're better off just not buying it. So that is kind of the motto I guess I've lived by in terms of buying blown up STIs. But yeah, I don't know what else there is to say. I never thought I would be at the point where I am right now. I've got a 2019 STI that's running. I've got a 2017 and I've got three or four other STIs. I, I'm forever grateful for where I'm at right now and I hope I continue to just move up and hopefully this social media ends up working out and I can do some cool builds for you guys and I can learn with you guys and make mistakes that's just that's all part of it if you made it this far into the video I greatly appreciate it yeah I hope this continues to grow like I said I'm at a changing point in my life if you've been following I'm recently engaged and we are looking for a house so yeah I'm doing more grown up stuff than I was before, but I just want to take you guys along that journey as well. Yeah, I just kind of want to document growing up essentially. Not that I haven't grown up from when I was little, but in a sense, you never grow up, but just document, yeah, how I did this, how I'm going to buy a house, how I'm hoping to continue the business and continue the social media aspect of things. There's so much that I just want to document. And again, if you guys are watching, I greatly appreciate it. I think that's all I've got to say to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you find it inspiring. I hope it gives you some confidence to maybe go and try and do this on your own. If I had any suggestions, I would say save your money. Stop spending all your money. Get some money in the bank as a little buffer. Start doing it on the side while you're working. It's a lot of work. You're going to be working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week if you want to try and do something like this. Uh, but that's, that's what it takes. 
But if you've got some common sense and some work ethic, you guys could do this just like I did. I'm not, I'm not any smarter than all of you guys. But yeah, hope you find this helpful. I greatly appreciate you watching. Hope you guys are getting your projects done. Hope you're doing well in life. I'll see you guys in the next video.